Look at this beautiful tower placket right here on the sleeve. You'll see this beautiful detail on a sleeve of a blouse, a shirt, both for men's and women's wear. And today I'm taking you step by step on how to get a really nice looking one. It's not as hard as you think, I promise. I promise you'll be able to do it. Stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is about sleeve placket sewing, which is a great addition to shirts and blouses. You can find these on men's and women's wear. If you go and have access to a men's shirt, you'll see this tower placket there. And for a lot of us who sew, this could look like a really daunting technique. It could seem really, really complex and just way, way above of what we can achieve. But I promise you, if you go slowly, step by step, step and practice a few times on some scraps you will find that it's not difficult to do at all and it looks amazing i'm wearing my chiffon aria button down that i've shown you in the previous video this one has a beautiful tower placket right there with a cuff and two buttons very pretty you can do it in chiffon if you want to also it's not that you can't do it in chiffon you can but i suggest if you've never done it before just test and practice with cotton with fabrics that are a little bit more structured those types of fabrics will give you a nicer experience you won't have to deal with fiddling your pressing will work really nice and crisp and it will stay there not like this but if you do have a lot of sewing under your belt and you've never done a placket with chiffon or silk it is totally doable this is proof and it can turn out just as nice just a bit of information for you just a bit of information for you the aria button down is on sale through monday the 2nd of may so that is the last day that you can purchase the course and the shirt or just one or the other remember that when you purchase the course during release week you get the aria pattern included if you purchase the aria button down course later on the pattern won't be included and then you would have to purchase the pattern separately another thing and you better get ready on the 2nd of may which is the same day as the last day of the aria sale is when the spring sale starts at love notions and it's a 40 percent off sale it's a really good discount it will be site-wide excluding the aria button down of course because that's just recently been released at love notions they are going to do a big giveaway what you're gonna win is your wish list <laughs> if you have patterns that you've been keeping an eye on you can log into your account browse tap on the little heart there and make a wish list and you can win up to 10 patterns from your wish list only one person will win this big prize so don't stop buying patterns because you think you might win just get your patterns if you are actually selected the winner then you would be refunded the patterns that you bought during the sale the way to enter this giveaway is to post a screenshot of your wish list and make a post on the facebook support group you can also post it on your instagram profile and tag love notions there and that's how they'll find your post and enter it into the giveaway i will have some special content for you during the spring sale make sure you subscribe to the channel tap on the bell so you get notified when i upload new content i'm always bringing you a lot of new ideas inspiration lots of technical tips and tricks and my goal is for you to just have the best experience you can on your sewing journey and I'm here to give you a little bit of extra support. Please keep all of this information and let's get back into the placket sewing. I had promised that I was going to show you how to sew this placket and here I am. I'm fulfilling what I promised. I'm really, really happy to share the technique. You will be seeing parts of the technique with this fabric, just the main pattern pieces, but for the rest, you will be seeing it on a houndstooth black and white and then the contrast will be in a green rayon linen and blend but before we get into the sewing I do want to give you a brief overview of general concepts that can help the most important concept is that the placket overlaps towards the back part of the sleeve it'll be close to the seam of the sleeve under here so it won't be here on the front of your arm it'll be right here at the back of your arm that's where the overlap happens when you see the actual placket pattern piece you will see a short end and a tall end that's the way I'm going to refer to those when you see the sewing. It's really important that you note and you know which one it is and you're always checking to make sure the short end is on the correct side of the sleeve and the long end is on the correct side of the sleeve so you don't end up with a placket that overlaps to the front. I think this is a piece that needs to be interfaced regardless of your fabric. I recently made my son a jacket in denim and I still interface the placket piece. It'll just give it more structure and it will be much easier for you to work with. Whatever fabric you're using, please interface it. And I suggest block fusing as always. When you are putting the placket onto the sleeve, you are putting the placket on top of the sleeve and both of these will be facing wrong sides up. So you see the wrong side of the fabric and you see the interface side of the placket both looking up at you. 
that is the correct way to do it. When you flip the placket to the right side of the fabric, you have your pretty fabric of your sleeve and also the pretty fabric of your placket. That needs to be correct also. In different types of patterns, you will have your tower placket and you might have other details that go along the bottom of the sleeve. You can find gathers, you can find pleats. Just take that as something secondary, something that goes right at the end. Just forget about it and focus on your placket at first and don't get distracted with all the other details because they don't really make a difference and they have nothing to do with the placket itself. Now these can look really different even if the technique is super similar. You will find some that have a little triangle on the top. This one has a triangle on the top you could find others that have a rectangular shape here on the top and the last common concept that I want to mention is that of course after you've done your placket and all those things there is a cuff attached to the bottom of the sleeve of course you can sew it traditionally or you can sew it in reverse the way I'm going to show you will be in reverse because I find it easier so let's hop right in please watch it pay attention follow along with your scraps and you'll be able to get a really really neat placket I promise let's get into it Don't you this is starting to wear. Okay, here we have our two sleeve pieces. Put your two sleeves mirrored, facing up, wrong sides up. You can clearly see this is the wrong side of the fabric. Keep the double notches here in the center. So double notch, double notch. This is the back part of the sleeve. And now this is how your plackets should look. The shorter end of the placket towards the back part of the sleeve. Short end of the placket towards the back part of the sleeve. This should be closer to the center of the sleeve, sort of towards the front of the sleeve right there. Up closer you can see the placket, it's also wrong sides up, it's got a rectangle mark and in the center we have a mark that is going to help us do the slit later. This mark is the one that has to match that long mark that you have right here on your sleeve. So right there there's a longer mark and then there's four little short ones. Ignore the short ones, those are just for little pleats later. We need to align this slit mark right on top of that mark right there. And we'll do that for both of them. Each placket to the correct sleeve. If you get these inversed, you're going to end up with a placket that overlaps to the front and that is wrong all these tower plackets overlap towards the back and in order for that to happen you need to have these like that the short end close to the back part of the sleeve the tall end close to the center if you made a mistake and did this then that would be all wrong and you're going to end up with a placket that is going to look like a placket but it's going to come this way it's going to skew the whole thing sleep mark there on the fabric I can see it really clearly it's important that you can see yours then we have four little ones there's one step we're going to do before aligning these but I just want to show you what we are aligning take that center slip mark and match it here to this one you can see right at the edge that these slip marks need to be right on top of each other and up here you can lift it and move it until you know it's right on top and this is where I'm going to hand baste that in place but first we need to go to the iron and press these ends in by 3 8 this one there the short one also the long one and also all this here we have our two sleeve placket pieces you can see there's a short end and a tall end that's the way I'm going to be referring to them so it's easy to understand towards the shorter end of the placket you will have this rectangle mark right there. First we need to do a few preparation steps before we sew this onto the sleeve. That is to press this end by 3 8 of an inch, this long end by 3 8 of an inch and these two. In this area for you to be able to fold it by 3 8 we're going to need to do a little snip. So the seam allowance is 3 8 I'm going to do a dot here 3 8 and that is where I'm going to snip into and that will allow the fold to happen here otherwise you couldn't fold. So right here snip 3 8 of an inch in right there and right there. So I'm going to head off to the iron and press this in that way that way that way everywhere all these ends it's way easier to press them now when you have this piece on its own than trying to do it later once you've already sewn it onto the sleeve here we have both placket pieces pressed both ends here the long end and the short end and then all this little business on the top if i bring it up closer you can see all the fold going on this is the section where we snipped into and everything has been folded in by 3 8 Different patterns will have different details here and use different seam allowances. Just make sure you're doing that properly, but it will be something similar like this. On this side, it looks really clean. All that fold has been done. Make sure you press it nice and crisp. It facilitates the steps that come later. Let's go ahead and take both of these and put them on the sleeve. Take your placket pieces. You have a short end and a long end. The short end needs to be on the back part of the sleeve. So this is the side that corresponds to this sleeve. On the placket, you have a line 
line in the center, right? That is the line that you need to put right on top of this line here. It's quite easy to see what you're doing there and then lift it, shift it around a little bit, make sure you're right on top. And that is where that placket is gonna go. Now on this other side, this is the back part of the sleeve. This is the shorter end of the placket. Always the short end is gonna go towards the back part of the sleeve and we do the same. This is the correct way to do it. So here we can see the center line, put it right on top of the line you see underneath, put a pin, and then on the top here is the center of this line, and at the back I can see my line. Make sure you mark it with something that you can see. So make sure you fix these in place. I'm putting pins now when I head to my sewing table. I'm going to take the time and just do some quick hand basting around here. I just find that fixing it with a few hand baste gives me more security and I don't need to be dealing with pins when I want to be focusing on sewing this rectangle as accurately as I can. Doing it pin free makes it super easy. Okay here we have two sleeves with the plackets already basted on. I've just done that around the edge and now I'm going to go ahead and sew this rectangle. When I sew things like this, I like to use a shorter stitch length than usual. I'm usually using 3.0, but for something like this, I'm probably gonna use a 2.4, especially on these pivot points right there. So nice to sew this without pins. You just go ahead and sew, no taking out things. Very enjoyable. Okay, now we have to cut this in the middle, right here on this line, lies through the center right here. And the mark tells you where to stop. It's about half an inch before the end of the rectangle right there. And then I'm gonna take this one and cut into those corners there and forms a little Y right there. And same over here. I'll get the other one and do the same. So you wanna cut in as close as you can to that corner, but not through it. You do want some fabric there. I'm going to remove these basting stitches. They don't need to be there anymore, but they serve their purpose. So what we need to do now is head over to the iron and flip this to the other side. All this placket is gonna come over to the front like this, and you're gonna end up with a little rectangle. All needs to be tidied up at the iron though. Okay, before I flip this to the other side and head to the iron, I know this seam allowance is too big here. It's about half an inch, so I'm gonna trim it down to a quarter of an inch. Might as well do it now because I know I'm gonna have to do it later. And then on this other side also, I'm at the ironing board and what I've done here before flipping this to the other side is try and set the seams a little bit. So pushing that seam allowance towards the placket this way, I gave it a little press there. Same as on this side and on this one on the top as well. If you've lost a little bit of your crease that you did before, just make sure you go over it again so that it is nicely creased because it's just going to make the next step easier. So. Now that I've done that small amount of prep, I'm gonna just flip this to the other side. Now we have your main fabric and the placket fabric right sides up, both of them, and you're gonna get this little rectangle. I'm just gonna give it another little press towards the placket. And also on this side, look, that's the little snips that we've done before. Make sure they're really flat and pressed in like that. It's gonna make it easier later. Same as this little snip right here. Make sure it's really nicely pressed in like that. Now the first step is to take this short placket and get the fold and bring it over to cover that seam right there. It's gonna create a little fold here on the top also and it's gonna cover that raw area. Fix this in place. There we go. And then it's really easy. You take this other fold and then scoot it over a little bit. <laughs> this fold is going to cover that seam. And what happens when you do this is you're gonna get this. Now this tower area is gonna eventually cover everything. It's gonna cover that fold there, but we need to tidy that up further. Let's just give it an initial press right here. I'm gonna be hand basting this down. If I was working with a lighter weight, I wouldn't worry that much about this going on here. I will be trimming some of this away because it doesn't need to be there. So then it's just gonna be easier to cover all that raw area with the taller part of the placket right there. Okay, so we're working with this first fold. This is the shorter end of the placket that we just folded over and it's gonna cover that seam. When I stitch this down, I'm not gonna stitch all the way from the top because there is a little area I wanna trim away. So from this horizontal area right there, I'm just gonna start a little above that. You don't really need to stitch further there and then sew all the way down. Just keep all of this other side of the placket out of the way. You can see how that looks and this is how it looks on the inside. 
very neat when you look at your sleeve this short end that we've just done first is always going to be closer to this shorter section of the bottom of your sleeve and this is towards the back of the sleeve and you can see now that the second part of the placket will overlap towards the back of the sleeve right there that's what I've been saying from the start it'll go that way this is how a placket is correctly sewn now this is the area where I want to get some bulk removed so just above where I'd sewn I'm just going to cut away diagonally just like that and get rid of that it's really not needed so that this placket is going to come right on top here you can see this part coming up or you also don't need to have all of that in there so I'm also going to trim diagonally that way with the chiffon version I made I didn't trim anything away because the fabric was so lightweight so what we need to do is make sure that this raw area is going to be tucked underneath there when we sew I like using my seam ripper to just tuck it in there and baste right on the edge and that's going to give me a really neat result so what I'm going to do now is just baste if I lift this you can see that diagonal area I'm going to start a little below there right there and start basting here here go all along there and then all the way down there once it's hand basted we can top stitch okay so I've just started hand basting from here and I'm going up and this is the area that I was mentioning that I want to tuck in to make sure it's covered by the placket piece. I usually hand baste away from where I'm going to sew, but in this case, because this is a critical area, I'm just going to hand baste right there on the edge. But that specific area, I really want to have covered everything, see? When I top stitch, I'm going to sew right on the edge. It's going to tuck away all those snipped little raw areas away. And this area here on the top is not critical <laughs> either. <laughs> I'm just basting it to hold it in place. I couldn't do this with just pins. I know everything would be sliding and shifting out of place. And over on this side, we also want to cover that right there. So I'm just make sure to baste it right on the edge and making sure it's going to cover it up. Okay, so you see hand basting took like no time at all to do and it will make a big difference. I'm going to take a friction pen. If you look at the back, you will see this area. So I want to top stitch just above that, like an eighth of an inch above that to hold that down. So I put a pin right through there so that I know at what level I want to do my horizontal seam here. So I can see that pin and I'm going to draw my line right there. To top stitch now, it's going to be in a little shape. So look at the end of the placket that isn't sewn, the one that's hand basted on that edge. That is where we're going to start. So right there, we're going to sew across horizontally and then pivot and then follow the shape of the tower of this triangle on the top and then finish going all the way down. Okay, so you can clearly see this is the long end that hasn't been sewn yet. That is where I'm going to start sewing across. Okay, now this last step is just going all the way from here to the bottom. Just move this out of the way. You won't be catching this because this is further this way. So don't worry about this other side. What's important here is that I want to sew right on the edge to make sure I catch all those little raw areas that were tucked in there. Okay, so that's done. It turned out really, really nice. Now, as I said, some of these basting stitches around this area were caught in my seam, but it doesn't matter. I will still be able to pull them out. If in doubt, just hand baste with the same color, uh, something that matches what you're sewing. I was using a contrast color for you just because this is a tutorial and I wanted you to see the hand basting. Now this long thread that I had from the start, I'll just push it back and knot it at the back. Okay, I want to show you how pretty this looks. I've taken out all the hand basting. This looks so, so nice. Remember the overlap is going towards the back part of the sleeve. The back part of the sleeve is the short end. Then you have a really long end over here. And let me show you how this looks like on the wrong side. It looks really pretty. There's no raw areas. That was the seam that we'd done a uh, previously and it's a clothes seam being top stitched down from the other side here's a little triangle you probably can't see it but it's all very neat nothing's going to come undone and start fraying on you down the line so whatever sleeve you're sewing you could find different variants maybe you need to gather this in to a cuff or maybe you have some pleats in this case for this pattern i have some pleats here two pleats and i'll just quickly do those. These pleats are designed to be folded away from the placket. For this specific pattern, you have four marks here and I'm just going to join the first two marks 
and then the second two marks and that forms a pleat. The finished circumference here is going to match your sleeve perfectly. So those are the little pleats. I'm going to give it a quick base, just about an inch long each, just to hold them in place. Now I want the base to just keep these pleats flat. When you look at this from the wrong side of your sleeve, you're going to press the volume of the pleats towards the placket because I want to sew it like this and I don't want to sew against the volume of the pleat. I'm going to sew it from the right side of the fabric and it's just basting. This is going to be all tucked away inside a cuff later. You can see the pleats have been basted towards the placket right here when you look at it from the wrong side. Next you're going to take your sleeve, put it right sides together and you're going to sew the seam of the sleeve. I have already surged it because my plan for this fabric is to press the seams open because my fabric is more medium weight. Okay so the seam of the sleeve has been sewn. What I'm going to do now is put these two placket pieces together right there and just mark where the middle point of the bottom of the sleeve is with a pin. This is my cuff piece. I had previously folded one of the long ends up by 3 8 I've put a pin in the center also and I want to sew my cuff on right side of the cuff to the wrong side of the fabric so that I can flip it forward and top stitch it from the right side of the fabric later. So I'm just going to align the centers here and now the end of the cuff needs to protrude by 3 8 of an inch there so we can sew it down. That's a seam allowance to close it up in a second. So you can see the length matches perfectly with the pleats in there. And then on this side, we will also have 3 eighths of an inch protruding here. So it's really easy. I'm just going to go and give it a quick stitch. This pattern uses a 3 8 seam allowance. So that is what I'm going to sew right now, uniting the cuff to the bottom of the sleeve. I'm going to go over to the iron and press the seam towards the cuff right there. Press it flat upwards and then we can finish these ends. Okay, so I've been to the iron, the seam has been pressed up towards the cuff. Now we're going to take the short ends of the cuffs and fold them right sides together. If you're looking at it like this with a raw seam looking up at you, make sure the bottom layer here, the fold, is a hair longer. If you can see there. When we flip this, that's going to make sure that that will cover the seam. So that there. And then on this other side the same. You can see how it's a hair longer. After these short ends have been sewn we can flip it. I just fold this on top there. I don't trim any seam allowance away. And it's really really easy to get a really crisp cuff right there. You don't need any tools, nothing like that. And now I'm going to turn my sleeve towards the right side. And this is now again where I'm going to hand baste. Make sure this open edge is going to cover that seam by a hair. I have hand basted with green this time. <laughs> and I've been to the iron and gave it a press because I want this bottom edge of the cuff to be nice and creased because I'm going to be top stitching on there also. So we'll just start here somewhere. I have my blind hand presser foot with the needle to the left again to help me top stitch really neatly going all the way around, pivoting at the corners. Okay, so there you can see it's really neat on the corners, catching the placket, neat on the inside also. Very nice cuff. And that's it. Look at this. Look how pretty. Here are the tower plackets on the long sleeve. I love that detail. It's very neatly sewn and I think it looks amazing in the green. The cuffs are really neat. I would have loved to put two buttons on the cuff, but I didn't have enough buttons. And another look at my placket that I'm so proud of. You can see how to sew that on the video on my channel, of course. I've shown that in great detail. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think it looks really, really pretty. Really happy to sew something that looks so, so pretty and so neat. And it also looks super neat on the inside, as you can see, I've shown you in the video. There's nothing that's going to fray or tear apart, no raw areas, nothing. It's all been covered with the longer end of the placket and it's a really satisfying sew. I hope to motivate you to try things like this. There is no way that you are going to get good at something if you never do it and you're always scared. And there's no point of being scared because I'm sure you have scraps around your house that you can use up for your own learning. It's that basically, it's just fabric, it's just scraps. 
give it a go, follow the steps and you'll be really, really happy. And at some point you're gonna feel really confident to be able to sew this on a shirt and it'll be amazing for you, I promise. I hope this video was helpful. I will see you again very soon, very, very soon because I'm going to show you three more versions of the Aria button down that I've been having fun with, different versions, different sewing to see also. So stay tuned, I'm really excited to share. There is a dress in there. That's all from me now. I will see you again very soon in a few hours actually. Bye.